Well, it's an exciting time launching into this journey with generative AI. There's certainly a lot of hype there. Pass that and think about what are these capabilities? What do they mean to my company? How could they help us move forward? And you can't dismiss it. You have to accept that there's value there. You need to learn and kind of be open to that learning to see how you can move things forward. And welcome back to CEO Tech Live. I'm Ben Fanning, your host, and this is powered by Hexaware. And today I've got a great leader coming your way today with Kevin Bates, who's Senior Vice President and Chief Data Officer over at Fannie Mae. Yes, that Fannie Mae, known as the Federal National Mortgage Association, the government sponsored enterprise that provides liquidity, stability, and affordability to the US housing and mortgage markets. Kevin began his career as a software engineer and worked his way up to the C-suite and hope we dig into that today. And he serves on the Board of Governors for the Washington DC CDO Conference. Brought, I guess that's, that's sponsored by Avanta, a Gartner company. Mm -hmm. And Kevin has his Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry from Texas A&M University and a Master's Degree in Chemistry from Rice. Kevin, welcome to CEO Tech Live. Thanks for having me. So, so such an interesting background here. My biggest curiosity to start off is, how did you move from biochemistry into the world of finance IT? Great question. Uh, fun part of my journey. I always <laughs> say I just kind of fall into things and I've been very fortunate over the course of my career. Uh, started off thinking I wanted to go down the road of, of medicine and, and studying biochemistry. Uh, realized that what I preferred the most in what I was studying was really the computational theoretical parts of it. So learning to write code. Mm -hmm. I uh, started becoming the systems administrator for the lab that I worked in. And I developed some general IT skills that when the time came, uh, I was uh, looking at getting married. Uh, my wife needed to move to another part of the country. I felt like, you know what, it's time to get a job. <laughs> and those skills really helped me. Uh, and I was very fortunate to meander my way through a few startup companies, ultimately landed at Fannie Mae, and I've had a 20 year period of just sort of maneuvering along. And it's just, uh, it, it was a great background actually to help me in what I'm doing now, which is data. Well, so what strategies were helpful to you in your ascent to the C-suite? Because starting as software engineer and working your way mm -hmm. all up in one organization is pretty awesome. Well, uh, I guess, awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I would say, you know, I've thought about that quite a bit. Um, just in my own experience, I think there were really two things. Uh, one more on the technology and learning side, which was to be always open and always looking for that next set of opportunities uh, that would help me grow. Mm -hmm. And then being open to that growth and open to learning completely new areas and having the confidence to just jump in. Uh, that's not something that came that naturally to me. I sort of had to learn to do it over time. And as I did it more, I realized it was really a self-affirming cycle. Um, on the leadership side of it, I think it was always, uh, you mentioned something about being at one organization for a long time. You really have to be authentic and you have to be reasonably easy to get along with. And you need to, you know, <laughs> and, and be fair. Days. You can't make too many enemies because they will hunt you down. And, and uh, so, so no, it, it's, it's working with a great group of folks, having a common, uh, common goal that you're working toward, and, and honestly getting along with people so that you want to stay there and other folks want you to stay there. So what do you think, what are people's uh, maybe misconceptions about Fannie Mae and working for that organization? Uh, well, Fannie Mae has, you know, a, a, a long record, you know, uh, We've been around for over 80 years. So yeah, we, we, we've had an interesting last 20 years, uh, which started you know, back to really the beginning of my tenure there. So I think that as a very large financial company, we are in the heart of the real estate you know, uh, market uh, of this country. We're an important stabilizer of the country <laughs> in terms of being the second, the, one of the primary, uh, 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 one of the, having one of the primary roles in the secondary market, which stabilizes and really makes the whole system go. I think it is complex enough as a large financial institution that does uh, work not directly with consumers, but between uh, the banks 
and the Treasury and the government and having that role, it's very easy to get caught up in misperceptions. But um, I think, honestly, it's a very clean, clear story around what our goal and mission is. Yeah. Well, so why does Fannie Mae need a chief data officer specifically? And what's the big challenge that you work on? Well, I should have mentioned earlier on the on the on the question about leadership and surviving. Humility is another very important. <laughs> so for me to ever say somebody needs uh, a particular role or that I need to be in that particular role, I think uh, mm. is a bit of a stretch. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can solve organizationally for the need. But the need mm -hmm. uh, in, in finance or really in in any industry, if you go back maybe 10 years or so ago, a chief data officer was a fairly new idea. There was a question around how stable and long-term that role would be. Um, and if you look now, I think you see that it has a pretty heavy, heavy role to play in, in any organization, especially one that's in the finan financial industry like us, because data drives all of your decisions. Data goes into the analytics that you use to characterize your business opportunities or risks or issues. Uh, and a lot of what you're hearing today around generative AI or AI, those are all built on foundations of data. So uh, in, that, in that way, a chief data officer, which brings together data governance, data execution, how it can be uh, safely, you know, uh, how it can enable the business to do what they need to do. It says a lot when a company makes an executive role. Right. Like the data right. is so critical to the business. Right. And not just data, having the right data structured the way that it can be utilized. Mm -hmm. The right data uh, at the right time with the right integrity. That used <laughs> to be one of our slogans. Uh, and, and we look at that uh, every, every day and, and you know you have that cycle of, of learning from the business what their priorities are, how can you enable it, and, and you're right. I think ultimately the reason an organization needs the role is they need to have roles that reflect the importance in certain areas. So. So when's the time you had an unexpected twist or failure in your career and how did it help with your success or growth on down the road? Hmm. Uh, well, I've, I've had many uh, failures along the way. I think they all contribute in different ways. I can reflect back to one of my earlier, uh, I, I look at this as being one of my greatest growing moments and it was somewhat of a private experience. It wasn't something that played out in a really public way. But it was at that period in my growth when I was moving from being a manager with a fairly local and well-defined set of projects I ran into taking over what we would call a big strategic initiative mm -hmm. where all the spotlight was on me. And as much as I felt I had support from the executives above me uh, to move forward when problems would come up, I, I honestly was not ready to, uh, I couldn't handle it very well. So I had these kind of white knuckle moments uh, when you really just worried, is there a way through this challenge? Uh, do I really have the support if I fail, or is that support kind of conditional upon continued track record of success? And and what I what I learned from that was, uh, I was maturing, and of course it's all about those failures when you run into a, a a difficult technology challenge where your project is now moving three months out, and oh. there's no hiding from it you're in front of your boss and your boss's boss and they're on the line too. So they're not real happy about it and how we all kind of collectively rally, support each other, replan, understand what we did wrong and what we can do right. That was all kind of a formative experience for me. And it happened, you know, about 15 years ago, probably. Yeah. A mentor of mine used to say, Ben, you know what the uncomfortable, that uncomfortable feeling that you're having now mm -hmm. is <laughs> learning. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So thinking a little bit about HexAware, mm -hmm. what's been the big benefit of working with them? Been a great journey with HexAware. So yeah. we've we've we are a longtime customer uh, and partner with HexAware, yeah. going back I want to say nine or ten years. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, so it's been been a good yeah. journey, at least eight years. Um, and we, uh, I guess I would say, on reflection, uh, there's there's a kind of determined competence in working with HexAware. They're very flexible. When they understand an area they need to learn or grow, they do it. And they don't necessarily tell you they're doing it until after the fact. But they've been very adaptive and supportive for us. So we first really engaged with HexAware when we were going through our agile transformation at Fannie Mae, which was, um, you know, if for anyone who's undertaken such a journey, it is a pretty, pretty much a, uh, 
a, a you go down to the uh, studs of, of your organization in terms of technology delivery and you you know find the right material and the wrong material and then you separate them. And one thing we needed at that time was a partner that could help us that had some flexibility so that we didn't have to make any very large uh, commitments of our resources so that they could really fit into our teams and our structure. So they were very supportive in doing that. Uh, they worked with us uh, within our agile teams and squads and built up uh, really a, a, a ongoing partnership that continues today uh, where they're really embedded in what we do uh, in a natural way. It's not a big, big splash separate effort that we highlight, oh, we're bringing in this partner to do this work. They're really just part of how we're working organically and that's worked pretty well. And we've been able to do that through different kinds of arrangements. They brought in a lot of innovation uh, that they use and they're not necessarily selling it to us as products. They're using it to accelerate how they just deliver for us oh, as part yeah. of what we do. So it's it's a good yeah, it's not like it's worked out pretty it's worked well. out pretty well. Yeah. yeah, for that many years, especially. Yeah, it's nice to be with a partner who kind of grows with you and mo and yeah. works with you and morphs with you and evolves mm -hmm. like that. Yes. So starting to put the cherry on the top of this interview, what's your parting thought for our listeners today? Well, it's an exciting uh, time right now. I guess my parting thought would be mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of opportunity. The uh, data, has, the importance of data, has really reared its head here as we're, as we're launching into this journey with generative AI and AI. And so I think it's really happening. It is exciting. <laughs> it's uh, really happening. Uh, yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not all hype. Uh, there's certainly a lot of hype there, but I think you look, it, get past that and think about what are these capabilities? What do they mean to my company? How could they help us move forward? And you can't dismiss it. You have to ac accept that there's value in, in, there and back to learning, you need to learn and kind of be open to that learning to see how you can move things forward. Kevin, thank you for coming on the show today. What a great message. Thank you. Thank you.